This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this particular part, let us solve a very simple problems. The first problem is two syringes of different cross sections without needles. Okay. Filled with water are connected with a tightly fitted rubber tube which is filled with water. Diameters of the smaller piston and larger piston are 1 cm and 3 cm respectively. Find the force exerted on the larger piston when a force of 10 Newton is applied to the smaller piston. If the smaller piston is pushed in through 6 cm, how much does the larger piston move out? So, they are considering two syringes of different cross sections without needles. They are filled with water and they are connected to a tightly fitted rubber tube. With, again, that is filled with water. So, they have considered two pistons, smaller and larger pistons. So, diameters of those two are given and we should find the force exerted on the larger piston when uh, 10 Newton is applied on a smaller piston. And uh, again, in the second part, if the smaller piston is pushed through 6 cm, how much does the larger piston move out? Okay. So, first. Uh, but to find the force exerted on the larger piston when a force of 10 Newton is applied. Since pressure is transmitted uh, and dimensioned throughout the fluid, we know that uh, formula that is F2 is equal to A2 by A1 into F1, isn't it? So, here A2 is uh, pi r square. They have given the value of uh, r that is uh, three, 1 and 3 centimeter. They have given the diameter. We, should, we can get the radius from that by dividing it by 2. So, 3 by 2, 10 raised to minus 2. This is the larger piston. And smaller piston, it's 1. So, if you simplify this, we get 90 Newton. This is the force exerted on the larger piston when a force of 10 Newton is applied to the smaller piston. Okay. So, coming to the second part, if the smaller piston is mush, pushed in through 6 cm, how much does the larger piston move out? Water is considered to be perfectly incompressible. So, volume covered by the movement of smaller piston inwards is equal to the volume moved outwards due to the larger piston. Isn't it? So, we can write L1A1 is equal to L2A2. Since we want... Uh, volume we want uh, the how much that larger piston move out l2 is equal to a1 by a2 into l1 again we know the area is given by pi r square they have given the diameters in the equation so utilizing those we can And L1, they have given it as 6 
centimeter we should write it in terms of meters okay we get the value as 0.67 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter okay or else we can write it as 0.67 centimeter atmospheric pressure is common to both pistons and that is ignored okay this is a very simple problem so let us solve a similar kind of problem in a car lift compressed air exerts a force f1 on a small piston having the radius 5 cm this pressure is transmitted to the second piston of radius 15 cm okay If the mass of the car to be lifted is 1350 kg, calculate force F1. What is the pressure necessary to accomplish this task? This is the question. So, we should consider the figure. So, in a car lift compressed air, a force F1 on a small piston having a radius of 5 cm, that pressure is transmitted to the second piston of side 15 cm. So, the mass of the car to be lifted is given and we should calculate the force F1 and even the pressure which is necessary to accomplish this task. Okay. Since pressure is transmitted undiminished throughout the fluid, so F1 is equal to A1 by A2 into F2, isn't it? So we know the radius, you know, they have given the radius directly in the equation. So, the first one is uh, 5 pi r square and F2 is 1350 into 9.8 mg. Okay. So, we get the value of F1 as 1470 Newton, isn't it? The air pressure that will produce this force which is approximately equal to 1.5 into 10 raised to 3 Newton, isn't it? Yes. So now we should find the air pressure that will produce this force. So P is equal to F1 by A1. We know the value of F1 that is 1.5 into 10 raised to 3 Newton. And uh, the value of A1 is pi r square we know r is equal to 5 centimeter so if you simplify this we get the value as 1.9 into 10 raised to 5 pascal this is almost double the atmospheric pressure okay hydraulic brakes in automobiles also work with the same principle which means when we apply a little force on the pedal with our foot, the master piston moves instead the master cylinder. And the pressure caused is transmitted through the brake oil to act on the piston of larger area. Okay, a large force acts on the piston and it is pushed down expanding the brake shoes against brake lining. 
in this way a small force on the pedal produces a large retarding force on the wheel an important advantage of this system is that the pressure set up by pressing pedal is transmitted equally to all the cylinders which are attached to the four wheels so that the braking effort is equal on all wheels okay here this hydraulic brakes also works on the same principle because that small force that we apply on brakes can stop that whole car how is that possible it is because of this principle okay so now let us study what is streamline flow okay so far we have studied the fluids at rest so the study of fluids in motion is known as fluid dynamics the study of fluids in motion we call it as fluid dynamics okay when uh, water tap is turned on slowly the water flow is smooth initially but loses its smoothness when the speed of the outflow is increased isn't it so when we slowly you know uh, what we can say on that water tap button initially it will come very smoothly but when we increase that uh, outflow the speed of that or the water will not come so smoothly as it was coming before so here we study about those um, fluids the property of the fluid how it changes when it is in motion so what's happening to various fluid particles at a particular point in space at a particular time we study about those things okay the flow of fluid is said to be steady if at any given point the velocity of each passing fluid particle remains constant in time okay the flow of fluid is uh, the flow of fluid it is said to be steady if only if the velocity at different points in space is same the velocity of the different uh, particles of the fluid at different points in space is same okay okay the velocity of a particular particle may change as it moves from one point to another that is at some other point the particle may have a different velocity but every other particle which passes the second point behaves exactly as the previous particle that has just passed that point so when the velocity at different points is different then it we can say that uh, the fluid is flowing and uh, each particle follows a smooth path 
and the paths of the particles do not cross each other that is very important okay the paths of the particles do not cross each other and the path which is uh, taken by a fluid particle under a steady flow is a streamline okay steady means we know that uh, the flow of the fluid is steady at a given point the velocity of each passing fluid particle remains constant in time so that path taken by a particle under a steady flow is called as streamline flow okay